What's up? Welcome to What's Pup, the series that will teach you how to be the best dog owner you can be. I'm Rachel, your host and lifelong dog lover. Today I have my friends Jill and Dahlia with me. Dahlia is a three-year-old Pembroke Welsh Corgi who loves to play rough. Don't let her size fool you. Geez, Dahlia, you're such a little beast. Jill is a 13-year-old. Um, hmm. Well, I'm not sure what breed she is. She's a senior dog who's a bit hard of hearing, so you gotta speak up when you talk to her. Hi, Jill! I haven't been a dog owner all my life, only the last six years. I learned quick that having a dog, let alone two, takes a lot of hard work and responsibility. Let's talk about the different ways to make sure your dogs are living their best life. First off is an easy one, love and affection. Some people just want to have a dog as a companion. What they don't realize is that you are your dog's entire life. All they want to do is please you and make you proud, just like a kid to their parents. Show your dog that you love them by petting them and cuddling them. Now one might think there's no wrong way to pet a dog. Believe it or not, there is proper technique to petting a dog, no matter how silly it sounds. Pet your dog like this. See how my hand softly brushes against her fur? She's so happy, she's smiling at me right now. I'm being kind and gentle with her. Jill here loves being pet. Sometimes, if you're not petting her, she will try to grab your hand and get you to do it. Or she will literally shove her entire head under your hand to force you into it. She's bossy and demanding. So rude. Don't pet your dog like a maniac. Don't push down hard on them, smack them around, or pull on their tails or legs. That hurts. Dogs like to cuddle too at the end of a long day. When I'm laying on the couch, Dolly will just curl up right next to me and go to sleep. Not Jill though. She hates cuddling and avoids it at all cost. Be careful when hugging dogs though. Even though we may really want to hug them after a bad day or because they are just too darn cute, hugs can sometimes stress dogs out. Just pet them instead. Dogs love to give kisses, but hey, not everyone enjoys being licked on the face. Another fun fact, Jill hates giving kisses. Hm. Jill, do you even like me? Ignoring me right now, so rude. Anyways, the moral of the story is don't ignore your dogs. Give them lots of attention and love and they will be very happy pups. If you have a dog or any pet at home, take a moment to give them some love. It's totally fine, I'll wait. Hi, Dahlia, I'm gonna give you some love, okay? Are you being good girl? Okay, yes. Um, okay, moving on. Let's talk about another big one, exercise. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh yeah, wait, not that type of exercise, sorry. Dogs love going for walks. You'll probably notice each time I say walk, it catches the dog's attention. Or maybe they'll make a liar out of me. They know that word very well though. Taking your dogs on regular walks will keep them in shape. It's a great way for your dogs to bond as well. Playing is another great form of exercise, like fetch or tug of war. Playing keeps your dogs busy and makes it less likely they will destroy things around your house. Hey Dahlia, remember when you destroyed my slipper? That was cool, you owe me a new pair by the way. Now let's talk about grooming. This one is important no matter how much the dog hates it. Grooming keeps your dog looking and smelling nice while keeping them healthy at the same time. There are a few things you must do to keep your dog groomed. If your dog has a lot of fur, like Dahlia here, you should brush them every other day. Corgis shed a lot, along with other breeds like Huskies, German Shepherds, and Golden Retriever. You'll notice that if you just pet these dogs, even for a little bit, a ton of fur comes out. You brush the dog the same way you would brush your own hair. This type of brush works best for dogs who shed a lot. See, we're just gonna brush her the same way that you would brush your own hair at the top to the bottom. And then you'll see that we've collected a bunch of fur already. Some dogs have hair though, like Jill. She doesn't need to be brushed as often and she doesn't shed. Bathing is another step in the grooming process. All dogs should be bathed at least once a month using a special dog shampoo. Some dogs love taking baths and others hate it. Both Dahlia and Jill here hate taking baths. 
Now, if you have a dog that loathes taking baths, here are a few tricks to make the process easier for everyone. The easiest one is to make them tired first. Take them for a long walk or play in the backyard before bath time. They will be too tired to put up a fight about taking a bath. You could also bring some food into the tub. Smear some peanut butter on the side of the tub and your dog will be too busy looking it all up to even notice a bath is happening. Baths need to happen regardless if the dog likes it or not. Baths are important because it cleans both the dog's skin and coat. It helps remove loose hair and debris and keeps the coat shiny and smelling good. This may sound silly, but brushing your dog's teeth is super important as well. It's recommended that you brush your dog's teeth two to three times every week and your dog should get a professional cleaning done at the vet once a year. You can purchase a special dog toothbrush, but never use human toothpaste. This can be toxic to the dog. Before you start brushing your dog's teeth, talk to your vet about their recommendations for your specific dog. Brushing your dog's teeth will help prevent bad breath and it helps prevent buildup of plaque and tartar. Jill here, my little old lady, doesn't have very many teeth left. This makes my job a lot easier though. Dahlia, being three years old, still has all her teeth and uses them to bite my ankles whenever she can. Trimming nails is another big part of grooming and just may be the trickiest. Dogs' nails need to be cut regularly. Usually their nails will file down a little bit on their own just from taking walks and playing. Us humans need to take care of the rest. I'll be honest, I strongly dislike trimming dogs' nails. It takes a certain technique and a steady hand. This is what I use to cut the dog's nails at home. It's easy to use because you just slide the nail in and this metal plate at the top will tell you where to stop. When cutting your dog's nails, you need to be careful of the quick. And I don't mean how quick they will run away from you once you have your handy trimmers either. The quick is a soft pink tissue in the nail that contains blood vessels and nerves. You have to try your best to avoid nipping the quick because it will cause the dogs to bleed. The quick is easy to locate on dogs with light colored nails, like Dahlia. We can see the pink right through the nail. Some dogs, on the other hand, like Jill, have black nails, making it very hard to determine where the quick is. Another thing you need to keep an eye out for is whether or not your dog has a dew claw. A dew claw is a nail that sits higher up on the dog's foot. This should be cut regularly too. If you don't cut your dog's nails, the nails will continue to grow and grow until they start curling. This makes it very hard for the dogs to walk and is very painful for the dogs. If you can hear your dog's nails tip-tapping along the floor, it's probably time for a trim. Let's talk about food next. Dogs will eat anything and everything, which is great because they aren't picky eaters. This can also be bad because some food can be dangerous to dogs. Dogs should be fed two to three times a day, the recommended amount based on their weight. This is easy to remember because dogs can just eat their meals the same time as you. Dogs love treats too. Who wants a treat? It's easy to go overboard on treats. Try to limit treats to at most three per day. Overfeeding can be avoided if you just follow the feeding schedule and limit treats no matter how much your dog may beg. Speaking of begging, chances are you've seen a dog do this before. Begging is when your dog is staring into your soul as you're eating people food. Let me demonstrate. Sometimes we give in and let our dogs have a little bit of our food. This is okay in moderation, but there are certain foods that dogs can and cannot eat. Dogs can eat most of meat, like chicken, beef, fish, etc. Dogs can also <laughs> bless you. Dogs can also eat most vegetables too, like carrots, green beans, and broccoli. Fruits like apples, strawberries, and bananas are safe for dogs to eat as well. Chocolate should never be given to dogs. Chocolate can cause dogs to vomit and have heart problems, seizures, and can even kill them. Keep chocolate away from areas where dogs can easily reach. Grapes and raisins should be avoided as well. They can make your dog sick and oddly enough can cause depression. Dogs should never eat ice cream unless it is ice cream that is made specifically for dogs. Dairy products can cause digestive issues for dogs. It can trigger food allergies in some dogs, causing them to itch. If you are unsure whether a food is safe for a dog or not, just skip it. It's not worth having a sick dog. But if your dog really won't stop begging, a quick Google search will ease your worry. Finally, let's talk about the vet. All dogs should go to the vet once a year for checkup and vaccines. Vaccines prevent dogs from catching life-threatening illnesses like rabies, distemper, and parvo. 
If you notice that your dog has been sick or acting differently, take your dog to the vet immediately. The vet will be able to tell you what is wrong with your dog and give you the proper medicine. Everything that we have talked about are the ingredients for a happy and healthy dog. Now normally I would encourage everyone to get a dog, but if anything that we discussed is too much work, consider getting a different pet instead. All pets are fun to have. We hope you enjoyed this episode of What's Pup? And we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Say bye girls! Bye! Bye! <laughs>